we are finally here after months and months of podcasts talking about combine prospects talking about draft prospects bringing people on and asking them about their favorite potatoes favorite bacon favorite crisps we are here at week one of the nfl season pro football ireland ireland's biggest ireland's best ireland's biggest nfl podcast we are unbelievably thankful to each and every one of you that has shown us the support over the last nine months two live shows last week upwards of 400 people at it it means the world and it means the world to be here with you listening watching interacting with all of you as we get ready for week one of the season what starts right here right now in a county Tyrone office slash kitchen with two lads from Kildare slash Cork slash wherever Mark Hogan is and Jason Hayes as well Michael McQuaid Mark Hogan Jason Hayes we go from right now we go to Vegas this is it Mark here we go man how are you doing man finally here I mean, we know that the time each and every year flies by, but when you're given a recollection of what we've done, the people that we've spoken to has been absolutely outrageous. The topics that we've covered have been from wild to wacky to fun to otherwise just like shouldn't even be on a podcast. But like, I, again, thank you to everyone to, that came to the live shows. It was a dream come true that I didn't even know that I dreamt up But when we were on stage the other day. But more so than that, it was to see that there's a community, a thriving community in Ireland that absolutely didn't exist a few years ago. And it's something that I suppose as we all got into the NFL before there was that community. It was just amazing to be talking to the likes of Jair from Galway afterwards and it's always great to see Simon at the event he come up from Dublin to Belfast to be there there's tons of names that I won't rattle off but like it was so nice to meet them in person again like I've seen them before but at the events and it's like everyone buzzing for the season and it's like yeah uh, it is that time where everyone is so so positive about their team that like you just can't wait to see it play out one of the main differences from last year when we finished the regular season when we were in Phoenix finished the postseason story was we had quite a small team and you know kudos to yourself Mark and to Michaela for really steadying that ship over the first few months of the season because that's that's what it was building up a brand and, and getting to this point now and it's it's been unbelievable it's been great to welcome in the college lads great to welcome in Connor Mangan who's joining Michaela on the Monday morning broadcast if you haven't listened to that they have a special this week and I've I've loved doing it so you boys have a lot to live up to I'm joking however delighted to welcome in Jason I know Jason we've done podcast before but this is our first one we're doing the week by week one so you must be pumped mate you're back home as well for people that weren't aware you were living in North America and now your time zone is back to uh is it warm outside or what time is it o'clock yeah I'm back in the back in the county of Cork now after a week in Toronto um that's our year in Toronto Michael you gave me goosebumps with that intro by the way that was pretty good I must say um, so back in sunny Cork now, mid 20 degrees, NFL right around the corner. I just echo everything Mark said there. It's just the most exciting time of the year. It's Christmas for every NFL fan and the amount of NFL fans in Ireland is just snowballing every year. And I can't wait to be part of this thing because it's, it's, um, the excitement is just too much right now. Not to sound like a Steelers fan, but here we go, boys. Here we go. We've got a meet up this Sunday in the world shed. I'll be there. Feel free to come down. Uh, Deer's Head in Belfast next Sunday we're in Cork on November the 26th uh, we're in London we're in Frankfurt in between that and Jeff has got three shows in Ireland he's in Limerick in Castle Troy and Cask nightclub on January the 19th in 2024 the Mac Theatre in Belfast on the 30th of January and the Wool Shed in Dublin on February the 1st it's going to be a busy season the good thing about this podcast is we have this podcast coming out every Thursday morning in audio and video format. You don't need to be listening to it on Saturday or Sunday. You can listen to it whenever you want. It's not going to be time relevant, hopefully. Um, and we've got content coming out all week. Monday podcasts. We've got extra podcasts. Two to three Jeff Ryan Bull shows per week. So we're good to go. I'll shut up. Let's get on with it. Week one of the season kicks off. It did kick off or it kicks off tonight, depending on when you're listening. Alliance against the Chiefs. An interesting early slip on Sunday when you got the Panthers going to Atlanta to take on the Falcons, the Texans playing the Ravens, the Bengals playing the Browns, the Jags going up against Anthony Richardson and the Colts, um, Baker Mayfield and his Tampa Bay Buccaneers post Tom Brady going to Minnesota to play the Vikings, the Titans against the Saints, one of the games of the week, the Niners against the Steelers, which is on TV in Ireland and the UK as well, the Cardinals against the Commanders, the Packers post Aaron Rodgers going up against the Bears, the Raiders against the Broncos, 
and the Dolphins charge, which is on TV as well for us. Eagles, Patriots, Rams, Seahawks. Sunday Night Football is the Cowboys going to MetLife to play the Daniel Jones $170 million New York Giants. And before I run out of breath, Monday Night Football, Josh Allen, Buffalo Bills, Aaron Rodgers, primetime New York Jets. Where do we start, boys? Where do we start? Is there one thing you want to say about how excited you are for the season? Because I feel, Mark, this is going to be a season where we look back at it in Vegas in February, please God, touch wood, that we look we, we will look back and go, and this has been the most unpredictable and the best season ever. And I've never sat at week one thinking, I have not a clue what's going to happen this season. And that's not a bad thing. Yeah, listening to even this rundown of what the games are this week, it's like I have a thousand ideas and threads going through my head for every single game that I can't wait to see play out. Like, I feel like every year as an NFL fan, I'm sure you guys agree, agree and any listeners agree, you're kind of like, I've never been more into it than I am right now because you keep on putting the building blocks up and up again. And it's like, I feel like I've never been more prepared. And I would have told you that last year, I would have told you that the year before. But um, I know that I've really, in the last two podcasts at the live shows, I really was honing in on the Browns. And I don't know, am I going to regret that? But when you see, the, say, the Bengals-Browns game, I Googled to see was that on Sky Sports because it might be blacked out for me. It's not. And I'm like, that's such an exciting game. And so are so many of them. And we don't know who the wildcard teams, the, the, and I mean not the playoff wildcard teams, but every single year someone comes out of nowhere and they surprise us and i can't wait to find, figure out who that is i'll be down at the wall shed for the early window on sunday so if you do want to watch that game they've got every game going uh, and they've got the rugby world cup as well so feel free to come down and say hi get me a heineken zero zero if you want jason um i presume you, you know you, you talk about how excited you are but i do feel like we are going to sit back in vegas after mark buys us a 24 dollar coffee Hold on there. I am on the hook for I don't know how many things in London. I'm buying all the schnitzels apparently in Germany. I'll have no money by the time we get round to the promises that you've been saying to fans everywhere we go. (laughs) Well, like I think like look, we put it in the press, so we're all gonna be in Vegas and it's gonna be a good week's crack. I just can't wait to see, you know, Jason, you're gonna have to like sit down all week because I'm not standing beside you for a video. That's that's for sure. Yeah, I, th- I think the big question now is like, who, who, what two teams are we going to be watching that week? Because as you guys say, like it's, I don't remember too many seasons past where there's so few teams that you really think are out of the running. Uh, I think it could be any number of teams make a push. There's been many rosters looking a lot different to to what they did this time last year. A lot of exciting rookies coming into the league, uh, rookie quarterbacks. You got Bijan Robinson in Atlanta. Um, and I just can't wait for Sunday now just to s- at least get an early sense of how they're doing. Week one traditionally is pretty tough to predict, of course, because you never know what teams are going to come out rusty. There'll be a few teams pull off a few upsets and naturally um, m- make some media headlines that maybe aren't justified because of that. But I'm just happy to soak it all in, for- put these predictions away, see how wrong I've been all off season because that's inevitably going to happen as well. Uh, and just get a sense of these teams. The one game now I'm, I'm looking forward to, I must say, is um, the Chargers against the Dolphins on Sunday. That Tua versus Herbert debate is always a big one online. Um, so seeing those two quarterbacks, those two offenses battle it out uh, should be a fun one for sure. Let's not leave this show tonight without getting Jason's Super Bowl pick because we've got everybody else's apart from Jason's. And before we start, Quick five second point. Me and Mark are truly on the bandwagons. Rugby World Cup starts this weekend, and then we're in a University of Colorado, Colorado Buffaloes t shirt. So, prime time indeed. Talking about prime time, talking about head coaches, talking about different teams. Should I say quarterbacks or head coaches? We're going to predict the best week one performance from a quarterback on a new team, boys. I'm going to make it easy for you this year. I'm going to make it quick. I'm going to get to the point. Anthony Richardson, okay, coming into Indianapolis. A lot of talk around him. Is he the finished product? Is he going to elevate this team? Indianapolis do not have a running back. There's no Jonathan Taylor there. So it's all in him this weekend. Now, Bears quarterback Justin Fields played the Miami Dolphins once, Mark. And he set the NFL single game regular season rushing record with 178 yards on the ground. Topping or getting better than Michael Vick's 173-yard performance 
back 21 years ago. I think Anthony Richardson has an unbelievable day on Sunday. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say he gets 178 yards. I'm going to say Anthony Richardson was over 145 yards rushing on the day, has a fantastic performance, and Trevor Lawrence still beats him. But I think in terms of, of, an, of a quarterback on a new team, I think he's going to have a great debut. Yeah, I'm looking at a different quarterback altogether, obviously, but over there with Jimmy Garoppolo in Las Vegas, we could do a whole podcast and I'll maybe briefly touch on it about that could be a pretty up and down ride that they're going into with Las Vegas. I mean, the Chandler Jones news and how he's kind of sitting there. I'm like, oh, what's going on here with Josh McDaniels? You know, I, I don't know. We were talking about maybe he was on the hot seat last year. We actually had a topic in one of our last shows of last year, whether he was going to keep his job and all this kind of stuff. So let's see, does it continue over? But I think John, uh, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo obviously was with him in New York, uh, sorry, with the New England Patriots. And Jason brought up with our live show the other day, thinking that he could absolutely ball this year. But I suppose with those wide receivers, Devontae Adams, Josh, uh, Jacoby Myers, People are really think, thinking he's going to have a massive year on fantasy and then whatever we get from Hunter Renfro. But particularly, it's against your Denver Broncos. And I have to look at an old pal of ours, Vance Joseph from the Arizona Cardinals, is now the defensive coordinator there. Jimmy Garoppolo was so good against the Cardinals, against that defense in particular. And I just feel that that might set him up. I mean, he's thrown for four touchdowns three times in five games against them and averaged a pass rating of 118. His accuracy was always above 70%, sometimes twice touching 75%. I think that he matches up very well against that Vance Joseph offense, even though I partake our defense, even though I do like Vance Joseph more than a lot of other people. So I think, uh, yeah, it sets Jimmy Garoppolo up well. I think I was going to say just before Jason jumps in there, like not to jump on this, but like I'm going to talk about the Broncos in a different topic here. And I, I agree with you. As a Broncos supporter, I'd say I'm not really supporting the team anymore. I don't have high hopes for that team on Sunday. I think they're all over the shop and I think there's been too much talk about them actually improving. And I'll talk about that in a wee bit. Jason, my friend, it's your turn. Yeah, I, well, I agree with you there, Michael. Um, I think Josh McDaniels is the biggest question mark there rather than Jimmy G. Um, they do, of course, have that past relationship in uh, New England as well, but um, it, it's actually quite surprising looking back at the numbers how limited Jimmy G's sample size was when they did work together. So I do I don't think it's an automatic fit just to say that they're they're back together and um they'll take off running. But yeah, I can I can see your argument there as well, Mark. Um I'm going a slightly different direction. Um as a player from Vegas also went in a different direction. Uh, and I'm going with Derek Carr. Um now over the last few years I think there's been a few veteran quarterbacks who just needed a change of scenery to re-energize and kick start their careers. You saw it with Matthew Stafford, of course, winning the Super Bowl in LA. Jared Goff on the other side has taken off in Detroit when it looked like his career was on a downward spiral. Even Ryan Tannehill in Tennessee. And yeah, I think Derek Carr is going to be that that name this year that takes a step forward after a few stale years um, in Nevada. Not willing to put my name to any prediction just yet that he's you know, going to be challenging for MVPs or something like that. But I think he, I can see him coming out with a strong start to the season. He's no shortage of motivation, having left um, Raiders in a less than amicable situation. He's got a lot of weapons with, at his disposal in New Orleans with guys like Chris Olave and um, Michael Thomas, although not too sure what to expect from him. So if they can get that running game going in New Orleans uh, with Kamara, Jamal Williams and that rookie from TCU, Kendra Miller. Uh, I can definitely see Derek Carr having a good day on Sunday. Tough defense to play against uh, the Titans, but he'll be coming out full of motivation and I can see him making making some headlines from from day one. Yeah, Mark, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to jump on that and just add to that. Like, I, I agree because it just feels like, and it, we've said this in a few podcasts over, just over the offseason, like Jason mentioned there how um, Derek Carr was treated at the end of his time in Vegas and obviously a lot of things come down to business in the NFL but you almost forget the circumstances in which he left that team but even from then when he's went to New Orleans it feels like there's just not as much I don't know there's, there's not as much respect shown to him as like different quarterbacks going to different teams Derek Carr has shown obviously there's parts of his game that he has to improve I'm not denying that but he has shown 
He can be extremely consistent at times. So if he can take it to a different level in New Orleans, rely on the run game as well, and establish a good passing game, they'll win that division. Yeah, do you know what? I'm almost sorry for Saints fans. We did have a segment planned for our Viva show to really hone in on them. We never got around right to it because of time constraints. And it does feel like a bit of a missed opportunity because they're a super interesting team. I mean, it's not like he's going to absolute consistency there. Derek Carr in New Orleans, it would have been cool to see him with John Payton, for instance. Obviously, it's different now. But that wide receiver group is getting a lot of pop if Michael Thomas can return to some level of like decency Rahid Shahid the number three there is getting like a lot of people are really impressed and then Juwan Johnson kind of flew under the radar last year as like when there wasn't too many other options to throw to that he definitely was a red zone threat so when you have Chris Olave who people really thought like was massive last year they could do a lot of stuff and especially yeah you're talking about the wrong and they have a fantastic O-line there still so that offense and especially within that division I mean we didn't solely focus on putting out kind of wall card picks and stuff like that. But I really, I don't know what to do with Atlanta and New Orleans because it's very likely that the two of them could go to the playoffs. You almost forget about that. I think it's been a mad few weeks. Uh, yeah, sorry, Saints fans. And yeah, apologies. We'll uh, guarantee a special podcast in the offseason next year when we talk about how Derek Carr won a Super Bowl. The new, right, so section two, like topic two tonight, um, topic three after an intro, which head, like in terms of a head coach, which team with the head coach is going to look most disjointed? And for me, like, I don't want to jump on what Mark said about the Raiders and the Broncos there. Maybe I've just seen it over years where the Broncos have, since they won a Super Bowl, they brought in different guys like Vance Joseph, Vic Fangio. And it just hasn't worked. And I have seen this cycle repeat itself over and over and over and over and over and over again. Like I had to sit through a summer once where it was Trevor Simeon against Paxton Lynch, right? But so when you start seeing obviously Sean Payton, then you're going, well, that's great. That's positive. When you're starting to see articles where it says, will you effing stop kissing all the babies? You're not running for public office saying to his main player, his quarterback, who had his, he's had his privileges taken away after the worst season of his career, 60.5% completion percentage, 16 passing touchdowns, 84.4 passing rate, the worst of Russell Wilson's career. I hope I'm wrong. But I, I think the Raiders are going to go into Denver and win for a start, but I just feel like the team will look disjointed. And I think it's going to take Sean Payton the better part of a season to turn this around in Denver, if not longer. Thankfully for him, with his reputation, his status in the league, he'll be given as much time as he gets or as, as much time as he deserves, and maybe he probably get two or three years to turn it around. But certainly, you know, there's a clear divide in that locker room. A player told us on it over a Zoom call after an interview a few months ago when I was chatting to someone. You can't fix that in, the, in, in a matter of weeks with OTAs and, and, and training camp. I think the team will be disjointed. I think you haven't got a kicker there in Bama McManus anymore. So for me, Sean Payton will be the most disjointed head coaching team after week one Sunday, unfortunately for me. Who have you got, Mark? Well, I love Sean Payne's comments as someone that is fed up with seeing Russell Wilson kissing babies. But as a fan, you're kind of like, after Nathaniel, the Nathaniel Hackett saga when he called him out, this does seem to be a bit too aggressive because people are saying it might be a bit of a toxic environment. But then equally, if he had come to the Cardinals and he'd done the same thing to Kyler Murray, I'd be like, yeah, whip him into shape. I suppose the difference is Russell Wilson has those few extra years. Although that is what was apparently went against Denver last year, that the rule of the roost went too much in Russell Wilson's favour. But like your kind of piggy backing on what I said in the last segment I actually think the opposite for you for Anthony Richardson and I see that Shane Steichen might struggle in his first game I don't think it'll be anything to do with Anthony Richardson part of the fact that rookies in their first game can often struggle like especially got with a guy that didn't take a ton of snaps in college they're going to be changing that offense around quite a bit to suit his style and it doesn't help that Jonathan Taylor is out with an injury slash a holdout whatever's going on there there has been a change with their kind of wide receivers as well they do get Michael Pittman back he was the wide receiver 25 last year in terms of passing yards but they did uh, lose Paris Campbell to the New York Jets New York Giants they replaced him with Isaiah McKenzie from the Buffalo Bills who I mean like that's not any star power that they've added there so it's like I actually think that the unless Shane Steichen who obviously worked his magic fantastically for that ex really really explosive offense in Philadelphia last year he doesn't seem to have the same tools to go with it this year 
I don't know. I, I, I think they could struggle quite a bit, especially when you have Shane Steichen. and he doesn't he's not just looking at the offense anymore. He obviously has to have his fingerprint on the defense as well. That there's enough there that it can make it tricky for him now as he starts off as the head coach. Yes, and he they got mid. Yeah, I like those two picks, first of all. Um definitely a tough one for Steichen when John and Taylor is the odd offensive identity in Indianapolis um, so that's a tough curveball to have to deal with as a first time head coach and just briefly touching on Sean Payton as well Michael I think his coaching style and he was so he had such deep roots in New Orleans that new players coming through the system knew his coaching style and the players on his team could coach players in but when you have a personality like that going to a new location and try to assert that personality and coaching style on a whole new roster um, it's not surprising to see at least a few speed bumps happening along the way but I'm sure he'll iron that out with his experience but anyway I think um, you probably could have said this name as well it's probably a more obvious name than you've gone for uh, so I appreciate you leaving this one for me but unfortunately I have to say that Jonathan Gannon in the desert is going to be the most disjointed head coach on Sunday nothing against him in particular he's had a tough time in the media the past few weeks with cringy team talks and other viral clips that are just being taken much too far and much too literally but it's just inevitable that it's going to get worse before it gets better in the desert Arizona has the highest roster churn in the league Uh, just 43.5% of the roster this year were on the team in 2022 that's the lowest rate in the league up until about 20 minutes before recording this podcast when uh, Ian Rappaport reported that Joshua Dobbs will be the starting quarterback. The team didn't know who it was going to be, or at least they weren't revealing who it was going to be. Joshua Dobbs has been on the team for all of five minutes. The other option was Clayton Tune, who's a fifth-round rookie who still has many flaws in his game based on his preseason play. The defense is in flux. You have a guy like Isaiah Simmons being traded a few weeks ago when he was getting a lot of snaps all off-season. So there's, it's a bit up in the air there in terms of uh, new faces coming in and seeing what's going to happen. They have three rookies listed as starters on the depth chart in Cottrell Clark at cornerback, Michael Wilson at wide receiver, Paris Johnson at tackle. While it's nice and refreshing to see rookies starting for the Cardinals, we haven't been too used to that in past years. I don't think it's completely a case of Austin Fort hitting on everyone in the draft. It could just be a case of that there's no one else to put in there at the moment. So I think Gannon will have his players playing hard overall with just the quality of that roster, the amount of new faces, a starting quarterback who uh, has only been there for a couple of weeks. I just can't see it looking like a cohesive unit. Mark, what what do you think? Am I being too pessimistic as a Cardinals fan? Pro Football Ireland proudly brought to you by 888 Sport, who are offering any team to go 0-17 at 10-1. to And you can be sure I've hit that thing in the Cardinals. So I think you're spot on. I done a betting podcast with Michaela a couple of days ago on this just that you've mentioned 88 Sport, and I do want to bring this up because I think it's relevant. Um, and I have it here. I'm very good at multitasking, you can see it, boys. Uh, with the Arizona Cardinals, it's I think it's like, the, they, it's not losing every game, Mark, but it's basically, yeah, the worst regular season record. The Arizona Cardinals are 13-5 on. Like, that's unbelievable. Like, oh, yeah, saying, but they're also, they're also four and a half wins. It's like, they are absolutely favored to get the first overall pick in the draft. Since when does a five win team ever have the first overall pick? It's like that four and a half, I think, is way too high. I think that's I, I think it should be at two and a half, really. Like they're they're not favored to win any game throughout their entire schedule. It's so funny as well when we're talking about it and we're we definitely do not need to preview the Cardinals all this is this is probably the most Cardinals talk we are going to get to do all year because they're gonna be irrelevant immediately. But when we were talking to Darren Urban, when was that? Back in April, maybe? We were talking about these kind of like cringy hype talks that Jonathan Gannon was getting done for and they've continued on. So I feel like that's the only relevancy that they will have otherwise that he's going to get himself into the news by just doing something that everyone's like embarrassed for. They've just well, become think... such a easy target right now, really. I think they just can't do anything right. And even when they aren't doing things wrong, they'll be the team that the media piles on. So, yeah, we're in for a long year, Mark, but uh, look, we'll get our joy from other teams. Josh Dobbs, baby. Josh Dobbs. You know, Ed, 
do you know what? Shout out to Stu the Celtic Cardinal, one of the our Scot- Scottish listeners or fans certainly, and just a friend through Twitter who goes to Cardinals games once a year and it was Colt McCoy you saw last year. It's Josh Dobbs this year. I don't know who it was the year before, but he has not ever seen an actual legitimate starting quarterback in the last four seasons of going over to the games. It's just like the most miserable look you could ever have. Um, yeah, lad. I feel like we should move on. However, I I think it, I think it was a valuable topic, and I would argue for a different podcast where we talk about discipline and teams that are trying to play them tight. I think they should be disciplined because it's an absolute disgrace. Anyway, Michael, that's, that's you just... need to quickly move on before I unload a whole okay. thing that I had okay. on our live show. <laughs> holdouts, holdouts. So, um, you know, there's obviously we. This is the thing that sometimes I don't like about the NFL: the fact that a player can just hold out and you know decide not to play. And obviously, in certain situations, you can be fined for not playing games. We've seen Saquon would have been fined. Was it like five hundred thousand a week or something if he didn't play for the Giants? He had actually got that done. I do believe that the way in which Joe Sheehan and Brian Dable treated Saquon Barkley after paying Daniel Jones $170 million is atrocious and frankly he should not be playing for them again I wouldn't have but then I can see why he did uh, Cowboys winning that by 13 and a half, 14 points on Sunday different conversation holdouts are playing a big impact this weekend this is probably the only real time relevant storyline that we have Mark going into this but when you look at Brian Burns for the Panthers who wasn't participating in walkthroughs and Frank Wright was continuing to leave the door open at the time of recording a couple of hours ago he's in pads he's going to play this weekend it looks like Josh McDaniels and Josh Jacobs talked about the response of him being voted as captain teammates are very happy that he's back and doesn't seem to be any love or sorry he any hate in terms of that their situation so he's done what he's had to do and he's he's back in um I guess the biggest question mark that we're going to not be able to have an answer on unless some sort of miracle happens via X, can't call it Twitter anymore before we go off this broadcast, is Nick Bosa. You know, as of today, he's not in the building for different meetings with the team. Like, I just can't see how he plays against the Steelers this weekend in Pittsburgh. And also, Mark, you know, even if he did get the deal over the line, he won't even play in half the snaps. So that, you know, it, it does make a huge difference. And sometimes I feel like in different sports, this doesn't happen, especially outside of North America. And it's different, but it makes a huge impact, especially because we're coming right up to week one. I guess the biggest question mark there is Nick Bosa, because they're looking at a Steelers team this weekend that is that is increased offensively in terms of talent. Let's see what happens with them. I expect, I know both defenses are good, I expect a decently scoring game in this in, in Arkansas Stadium on Sunday. I think over 55 points between both teams. And the Niners need Nick Bosa to stop the Steelers offense so what was your thoughts on the, the or just on the impact of all that overall I don't think Nick Bowes can play at this rate I mean he's only risking an injury because he hasn't been with the team and stuff like that that it's like he's just you have to be at that level you have to be in the pads getting used to it that's like why they had the training camp in the first place you know like when you're talking about the early days back in May it's a whole other thing but they've obviously proven they have the results and say like no the whole off season program does help you uh, stay injury free so I don't think he's able to just go in week one I, I I think it's a fascinating story what's after happening because I suppose we you never know up until week one who is actually taking this whole thing seriously who is genuinely holding out because so often players do come back uh, you know like kind of week two of the preseason but he's really pushed this and you kind of believe it's like I'm not going to say it's Le'Veon Bell all over again but when you look at the schedule part of me is like how long can they survive without him? Because if he really wants to send a message, he can. But it's like week one, they play the Steelers. That's a tricky one that they want him back, but I think it's gone now. But then it's the Rams, the Giants, the Cardinals. I think they fancy themselves against them. Then it's the Cowboys. That's a tricky one. Then it's the Browns. Then it's the Vikings. Then it's the Bengals and the Jaguars. So you really start to circle. It's like maybe four weeks they can hold out without him. And this is definitely one of the time-sensitive subjects. I hope he hasn't declared that he's walked onto the field now that I say it. But this could kind of go on. But he's kind of right to do it because when he signed with the team or when he got drafted, his brother, Joey, when he was selected in the draft, he held out deep into the summer to make sure that his rookie contract was really good. And people were like, oh, did these Bo- Bosa brothers have a bit of a 
an arrogance to them that they're they're willing to do this. Nick didn't do that. He kind of expected then maybe he would do it last year in anticipation this year, but he really has waited until the last minute to be like, no, come on now. I've not done any messing with you the whole time. Now I'm going into the, the fifth year. I don't want to be franchise tag next year. Obviously, I'm very aware myself of what injuries can do to you. So I think he's right in what he's doing. And to be honest, I'm one of those people that's like, yeah, as a fan, we don't want to see players holding out, but they're dead right to do. We just saw Dalvin Cook like have to tra- go to a different team because his contract wasn't honored when he should have been one of the highest paid running backs this year. We obviously know the running backs is a whole other situation, but it's like, yeah, they have to look after or after themselves because teams are so fast to tear up the contract when it doesn't suit them that when it does suit a player, it's like, yeah, you have to cash in. Yeah, I couldn't agree more there. Um, I think as fans, you want to see all the best stars suiting up and playing every Sunday, um, especially when it's a player playing for your own team. But it's a business at the end of the day and uh, any given Sunday, anything can happen and these players need to secure their futures. So it's just an inevitable side effect um, of the players having more power in the league year on year. Interesting to mention Joey Bosa there. He, even in 2020, he, when he was signing his, his new deal after the rookie deal, um, he held out for the most of training camp as well. So it's definitely something that the, the, the family is... Um, uh, passionate and stubborn about uh, perhaps more so than others but um, I can completely see why they're doing it from the 49ers perspective that's not a player you want to be put out for long um, you must think I, I, I'd, I'm always interested for the dynamic in the locker rooms in a situation like this will his teammates be fully supporting him will there be a bit of pressure if there's a couple of weeks go by they're struggling and Nick Bose is not there by their side fighting with them and uh, similarly, on Nick Bosa's end, if he does keep holding out, if this game of chicken keeps going on, uh, how long can he sit back and watch the defence? I wouldn't say struggle because they're a good unit regardless with or without him. But when he knows he can contribute to, to bringing more wins to San Francisco, it's got to be tough for him to just sit back and, and watch the team bleed out. At least with the likes of Brian Burns. I wasn't aware that news, Michael, but uh, um, it's good to see that's resolved. The teams perhaps don't have as high expectations as San Francisco, but San Francisco really need to hit the ground running and um, finally get over the hump because they're kind of always the bridesmaid at the moment, you know, making deep playoff runs year in, year out. And the Kyle Shannon will be itching to, to get that monkey off his back, so to speak. Interesting. I can't wait to hear your picks after our last topic for the Super Bowl, Jason. I'm dying. No to pressure. Hear. No pressure at all. No I will prep- say... Or just a uh, disclaimer there straight away. <laughs> um, just seeing, let's check and see if there's any news there on Bosa and it's it's not. So we'll, we'll, we'll swiftly move on. I will say, I would like to see a July deadline brought in for players in terms of new deals and holdouts. And if they pass that deadline, they can't play that season. Because I think they get a lot of this bollocks. Excuse my French. It's not a swear word. They get a lot of this bull sorted out very neatly and very quickly you know there wasn't an issue a few years ago whenever we had different situations going on and players are very quick to react and obviously there were certain different circumstances there and then but you are part of a team you're part of you're part of a you're part of a community you you work you you play you you die for your team and the Niners need him on Sunday and I think it's disappointing to see this situation and of course people need to get paid but come on sort it out lads there's my rant of the week, boys. Anyway, last topic. Um, as we roll through our week one show, um, I, I, I don't know who done this, but I like it. Hold your horses. Pick a team that's going to win week one and get overhyped as a result. Now, Mark, I feel like we're going to overlap here, so I'm sorry, but feel free just to jump on what I've said and you know, continue on. And you did pick this one before me, but the one that stands out, you know, is the Commanders playing the Cardinals. Yeah. Like there is, there is a there there is an argument for. There's been a bit of a talk about the Vikings and how they could take a step down. I can't see Baker Mayfield in the box going into Minnesota and beating them. The handicap is six and a half points at the minute. I that could be one, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, the box could be really, really good." Mike Gavins, Baker Mayfield. Oh, that's not going to happen at all. That's that's rubbish. But we all know these overhyped storylines that will come in. I guess if the Arizona Cardinals are to are to be believed to be as bad as what we expect them to be. And, and I, I know you boys, um, which is really funny because as we've just talked there now, Nick Bosa 
has agreed to a five-year, one hundred and seventy million dollar extension. Thank you're you Nick, for doing that. Live. You're joking. Unbelievable. Well, it's happened. Oh we're, my we're, god. We're, we're 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 reacting to it now. So he'll most likely be playing half the snaps on Sunday. Uh, that is the talk that he will only oh. play half the snaps on Sunday. Oh, that is that is outrageous. What's the timestamp on that? How long did we uh, miss that out on? That is absolutely insane. No, About I mean two and a half minutes. It's funny because when you're finishing up what you were saying there, it is that when you see the uh, the franchise tag deadline, what that does, the only equivalent for that for uh, contracts is obviously week one. I think they've left it too late. I don't think it'll be able to make much of an impact. Like if you were to go in and get injured, I think you're right. I'll probably play half the snaps, but like you need that intensity to be there. But I suppose, do we want to go too deeply into this? No, there's probably no point because did anyone expect him to not be with the 49ers it was no. a matter of if or sorry it was a matter of when not if uh, it does sound or save them a lot of tr- or trouble because of the reasons i outlined that um he'll be able to get to up to speed when they have the likes of the giants the cardinals and the rams uh, across the first four weeks yeah i think i think it's a matter of it was a matter of when not if I thought it would have got done on Saturday, but it's just funny it happened there now. And thank God it did for the episode. Bio you can literally cut enjoyed. out. Um, if you're listening to this, there was probably an extra 10 minutes that Michael has taken out that we talked in depth about that. that like, there's no point us leaving in this episode that is now gone. But yet, to bring it back to what you're saying about uh, this week's teams, I would think that the Washington Commanders are going to look quite decent against the Arizona Cardinals. There is a really nice wide receiving core there. And Sam Hubbard has gotten a lot of a lot of praise so much so that you had that crazy quote from ron rivera being like if i knew how good he was he would have played in the playoff game and i think that there is why i think that the commanders are ones that you need to hold your horses on because ron rivera has just kind of turned into this character of dysfunction that like even going back to last year when he didn't know that if they had a certain result would have knocked them from the playoffs or put them into the playoffs like in week 18 which is just like there i have him circled now i think that he's probably one of the most likely guys to lose his job ahead of next year or like some point throughout the year um that said about washington let's see their offense could be very nice and it is exciting they do have that nice d-line with montez sweat ron Payne, jonathan allen and Chase Young, who obviously had his fifth year opportunity to decline, so it's an interesting year for him. Like obviously we all think of him as the rookie of the year back in twenty twenty, but then that injury in twenty twenty one, he missed the twenty two games, fourteen of them last year. It's like he's no guarantee. So there is moving pieces. So I'm not saying that Washington is going to be hopeless this year, but when they go and trounce the Cardinals this weekend, I still have to see more. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick Bosa, for that segment. I'm not taking it out. It was funny. It was a good segment. We talked with different players also, so it's fine. He now has paid uh, the highest of any non-quarterback in the league, eclipsing Aaron Donald's $34 million a year. I can't believe Aaron Donald's still getting $34 million a year. There's an interesting point to make. Back to the topic that Mark is talking about, Jason. You know, everything's coming out with Sam Howell. It's, it's hard not to be impressed with his development, but the reality is in Washington, it was never, ever a, a competition for that for that place between him and Andrew Kobe Brissett. You know, he's talking to Eric Bieniemy, a guy that's come into this offense trying to run the show and trying to prove a point where he can work with anybody, not just Patrick Mahomes. Chase, um, he seems to be he seems to be a, a lot more confident than what I've seen a commander's quarterback being in recent years. I mean, if he plays on Sunday, which he will, he'd be, was it the seventh different season opening the starter in seven years for this team? So I think what will happen is, Jason... They'll beat the Cardinals. The hype trail will start and they'll get blown out by somebody in week two. But I, I I think they could put down 30 odd points against the Cardinals. And that is a bad sign of where the Cardinals are at. It's a whole different discussion. Have you got a different player or team to talk about, Jason? Well, it'll be interesting to see how well Sam does. Okay, crickets. Yeah, I'll move on swiftly from that one. Um, I don't know if I call them Chase as well. I'm just, you know, I, I need coffee. My bad. That was an awful joke, Jason. Just going to put it out. Yeah, I think I saw that on Twitter, so I'm going to pass that pass beam off. Um, but, yeah, I can see, like, look, it's a nice start to have for that Washington team, uh, at least. Um, not sure how much credit the media will give them when it is a team like the Cardinals. Um, but, uh, yeah, be interesting to see how they perform. I'm going a different direction with this one. Um, I can see it now. On Sunday night, 
Justin Fields scrambling around the pocket. Deep ball down the sideline. DJ Moore runs in for a touchdown. Oh, the Bears so. have beaten the Packers for the first time since 2018. Rodgers is no longer in Green Bay, no longer the mayor of Chicago. It's just too primed for an overreaction. So hold your horses, Chicago Bears. That Justin was going Fields... so well. <laughs> no, I just I built up the dream a bit there before tearing them down. I think um, you know they've got a lot of attention this off season, but it's easy to forget that Justin Fields he really has struggled as a passer the first two years of his career. He was 32nd in, in DVOA in 2021 and actually reclined to 34th in 2022. I'm not denying he's a phenomenal runner and he can make things happen when the ball is in his hands and he hasn't been in a good situation for the first two years. The team has put in work to, and the general manager has put in work to improve things, brought in a few improvements to the offensive line, uh, such as Daniel Wright in the draft and Nate Davis in free agency. I think the defense will be better. Um, a couple of splash signings in free agency with Edwards and Edmonds at linebacker, and I do think they'll improve. But you know they're not going to be a dominant force like uh, some of the Chicago defenses in the past. Overall, I think the Bears will improve. Uh, on last year, they were awful last year. I think they could be mediocre to maybe average this year. But I'm not ready to get on the hype train for Chicago. I can see them pulling off the win against Green Bay. They're actually favourites for the game. It's Green Bay's first time entering a season without Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre at quarterback for over 30 years. So it's going to take a bit of adjustment for that Green Bay team. I can see Bears pulling off the win on Sunday at home in Soldier Field, but I wouldn't pencil them into a Super Bowl just yet based on that victory. Mark, I feel like Jason almost had it. Justin Fields, long, deep pass down the field intercepted by someone in the Packers defense the Packers defensive player runs all the way to the five yard line and Jordan Love runs it in for a Russian touchdown on his debut and the Packers beat the Bears 17 to 16 and the play was with four seconds left and the whole place goes nuts and the Packers hype train starts how's that I mean we've covered the angles there with everything there I think yeah that game is Definitely really interesting because one of those teams is going to be madly hyped after winning that. If it's the Packers to say that they can win without Aaron Rodgers or the Bears. Uh, look, I'm not going to go through it again. We talked it at length in Belfast. I was two months ago quite high on the Bears offense turning it around. But then as you look into it, as we get close to the season, there's just a lot that has to go right for them to be really good. And yeah, listen back to the Belfast show if you want to, uh, if you want to know my thoughts on that. I think you're spot on, Jason. Yeah, um, Jason Bell interview in Belfast, Christian Scott and Williams season pre- preview in Dublin, the other team, the, the the Monday team with Michaela and Connor previewing their season, giving their picks, Jeff Reinbold preview in week one, previewing the season in two separate podcasts, the college football podcast for week two is also out. There's a lot of content out, so just search Pro Football Ireland on your podcast provider on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or even YouTube because they're all available in video as well. We don't sleep. And talking about not sleeping, Jason, who are you not sleeping on this year? Give us your Super Bowl pick. Now, just to remind people, I am going Eagles over Jets. Mark is going what Niners over. Uh, I think yeah, I'm. I think I've gone Niners over Chiefs for the Super Bowl, but that's oh. like realistically, it's the Chiefs win the Super Bowl because I made the mistake of it going against them last year. But for fun, for the graphics, it will read 49ers beat the Chiefs. There's a graphic. Oh, interesting. I presume I'll be tasked with making a graphic, but I uh, maybe no. I do, no do, do you know what? We're past the graphic. What we'll do is we'll we'll do an article, and I'll get everyone to send us a quote each, and we'll make a big sexy article. I'll hit you boys up, and I'll hit the rest of them up after this call. Jason, give it, give us a different team, make us laugh, make us interested, because Connor Mangan joked that the, the Minnesota Vikings might make the playoffs or might make the Super Bowl. So there you go. Okay, well I won't go that far. Um... Well, but yeah, that's it. Jeez, I've, I've put on the spot here. I think I would like to go with the Jets and the 49ers just from a storyline perspective. You guys have taken those teams. I, I might go in a different direction to keep it fresh. Um, Let's go Baltimore for Lamar Jackson. Comeback year. Uh, big storyline in the offseason. It's almost been forgotten about at this stage, but 
Um, he'll be back in Baltimore. So let's look at, to see if he can push on and she said NFC. Um, Cardinals? Let's, let's go. Let's No, no, no. no. Let's go to Troy Lions. Ooh. I'd love to see Dan Campbell. Oh, Ooh. whoa. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, I thought Michael was it's... brought away by the high train. That's insane. <laughs> oh, this, is, like... this is what happens. This is what happens when you're put on the spot. Right? <laughs> this is, I, I genuinely think I had an argument with Mikhail over this. I, I don't think picking the Jets to go to the Super Bowl is the high train. Like, I think Rodgers will, will take them to the Super Bowl. I think he's got these. That is one hell of a team he has. That's a whole different conversation. Jason, appreciate your picks. We now have the complete set of, of all our picks that are in. Uh, Mikhail is picking the Bengals. I think Connor's picking. I can't remember. I'm sorry, Connor. Can't come back. I didn't ask Diggin or Dara. So sorry, lads. <laughs> next year. Um, anyway, that is our week one show. We're back next Wednesday or next Thursday. We're recording next Wednesday, boys. Don't be watching Cordy Street or forgetting about it. I think you boys might be doing a podcast as well, depending on your availability slash fees. We'll talk about that off camera, but uh, buzzing to be back and buzzing for the support of everyone that's watched, listened, continues to support this podcast. If you can, folks, please like, share, subscribe this YouTube video. Please comment whatever you want. Feedback, let us know. Um, same with the podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify Podcast, Pro Football Ireland, TikTok, Instagram, X, Facebook, Pro Football Ireland. We're NFL Ireland on Facebook because they won't let, they won't legally let me change it. We're in Dublin this Sunday. Well, I'm in Dublin this Sunday. Come up and say hello. Please do. Because Marvin Mark's coming. So please, please come and say hi. Uh, if you want to be in camera, let us know. We're going to bring the mic set down as well. We're in Belfast next Sunday. Jeff's tour is on sale this Sunday, 10 o'clock. Or if you're a member, it's on sale now. There's my sales pitch over week one. Um, I'm going to go out bold and say, do you know what? I've been completely baptized here over the last hour Baker Mayfield will beat the Vikings in Minnesota this week the Baker train starts lads it's been great Michael McQuid Mark Hogan Jason Hayes for week one of Pro Football Ireland's NFL Sunday preview NFL week preview we'll see you next week and thank you for your continued support enjoy the weekend there's nothing like week one